Okay, so this is to how to set this up with using your own floor plan. Um, so I'm going to kind of pull back a little bit here on my camera so you can see a bigger picture, big, the big picture and the setup really clearly. So what you will need, and what I have right now is I've actually got a separate piece of, of paper that I'm using for the plan view setup. I've got some tape to keep things in place. Um, that's focus there. And um, I've got my straight edge and all that stuff. So the first thing that I want to do before I get my plan involved, and this is my quarter inch equals a foot plan, so this, this is to scale, um, is I want to create a line that I'm using as my picture plane. Not my horizon line or my ground line, but my picture plane. Because this is, we're going to look at this plan and lay this out first from a top view, and then we're going to project the perspective. There, I think that gives you a little bit more of an expansive view. Perfect. Okay, so there's my, um, I'm going to draw my picture plane up here. And if you do have enough room on your sheet, you can do this all in one sheet, but I'm doing this so you guys can see everything and then I can move it after the fact and then tape it down so you, you can see how I did the, 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 floor, the, the plan view or top view layout for the perspective and then how I'm going to use that to project my perspective. So this is going to be called the picture plane. PP stands for picture plane. And remember that everything on that picture plane can be measured to scale. So imagine the ground lines on that picture plane and your vertical measuring line when we create it will be on that picture plane. So once I have the picture plane set up, that's going to be what we use for reference. I want to position one of the corners of my building somewhere on that picture plane. And I think this, this is going to be a good angle right here because I want to see kind of as a perspective, I want to see the inside edge of that building. It's going to be tricky, but I think it'll work. Um, you know what I'm going to do though, just to make this a little bit easier, is I'm going to take this edge and find the corner over here so that I actually position this on the picture plane so that that corner is the one that's being used in reference. It's going to make, make it a lot easier to um, project things. Um, similar to how I told you to um, make make your grid larger than your floor plans to have room to draw out the grid, this is like a similar concept. So I'm just folding that so it's right on the corner and I want to put that on the picture plane. Now how you put it on the picture plane, this pivoting that I'm doing here, is going to change the focus or direction that we're able to see the building. So if I position it like that, we're going to be focusing more in this direction of the building and seeing more of that in a clearer. If I position it more at this angle, then we're going to be seeing this side of the building a lot more um, clear, clearly. My sunlight is changing here. Let me fix that. Um, so you have to decide which angle do I want to see my, um, my building in at which angle is going to work the best. You know, how do I want to see my building? And so I think I want to do something like this. And I want to just see what I've got this tilted at for an angle. It looks like I've got that at about 30 degrees. I like that. So I'm just going to tilt it a little bit more than 30 so it's not right at 30. And then I want to tape it down where it is. And I'm going to tape it up here so it's out of the way, but this is just going to make sure it doesn't wiggle, doesn't move, okay? Um, and just to make this make a little bit more sense, I'm going to put some dashed lines here and here. Okay, so that's going to be this point that I, the reason I'm, I want to position that point is that's going to be my vertical measuring line. Let's put the rest of my picture plane in here too, because I covered it up with my plan. There. Okay, so now we have the rest of the picture plane. I'm just going to tape this down a little bit better down here. 
so that doesn't move and we'll tape it here too. I don't want it moving. Okay, so um, the next thing we have to do is decide where we are in relationship to the building distance wise. So I'm going to use my quarter inch scale and I suggest that you measure somewhere around 25 feet away from your building to 30 feet, no more than 30 feet. Um, so I'm going to go 25 feet away would be here and draw a parallel line to the picture plane that shows me that distance. And I'm being very careful to make that parallel with my rolling ruler. So this is representing 25 foot distance. Let me pull that back into the camera shot here. Oh, it's barely making it, but that's okay. We don't actually need to see the rest of the building. We just need to see the, the building as it relates to the picture plane. So there's my 25 foot distance away from the building. And then I just have to decide where am I standing? Am I standing on this side of the ver vertical measuring line or on this side of the vertical measuring line? And I think I might, might want to stand over here somewhere. So I'm going to make a mark and this becomes my station point, SP for station point. And I have a feeling I'm going to need to extend this picture plane a little bit further. So I'll just make it as wide as I can on both sides. Okay, so station point is really important. The station point, the place that I decided to put the observer, is going to establish where my vanishing points are. So there's my station point right there. I'll use a blue line and I want to go from the edge of my building this is the angle I've got here through my station point like so and that creates one of my vanishing points that's going to be my vanishing point right that's the relationship so notice that I made these two lines parallel to do that and find that then I'm going to go from I'm going to set up the uh, the straight edge so it's on the edge of my building again and I know the station points now out of shot but let's fix that there's the station point down there okay so I want that to be parallel and then I want to do the same thing on this side until it lines up with the station point here. And I'll just draw that dashed line again to make it clear. So this blue line and this blue line are parallel to the two sides of the building. And they are what are locating our vanishing point left and our vanishing point right. Okay, so that's important. The, that, and this is our vertical measuring line. So we, uh, we uh, have found all the critical things. Now we're going to find our measuring points. And I'll do that in green. Measuring points are found by, I have to use another pencil to do this. Measuring points are found by taking the distance from the vanishing point. I'll put that right there. From the station point. So I see how I'm using this as a, um, I gotta switch these around. Using this, I'm gonna be using this as a giant compass. So I'm holding this in place on the vanishing point and I'm gonna swing an arc like this until it hits my picture plane. This becomes my measuring point left. Then I wanna set up the same thing. There's my vanishing point left my station point and I want to swing an arc this way until it runs into my picture plane and that is my measuring point right. So that's how you determine where those measuring points are. Now remember on the previous example I just kind of eyeballed those things but the, the, it, it has everything to do with where the station point is and the distance that we have to go from the station point to vanishing point in both directions. Whatever that distance is, this 
should be the equal distance from here to here for the measuring point. Whatever this distance is, the distance from that measuring point left to our measuring point, I mean our vanishing point left to our measuring point right should be equal distance from the station point there. And that's why we used it as an arc. Now you could have just measured like so and then measured the same distance this way and that would work too. Okay, now I have everything I need to project my um, perspective. So I've got it all worked out in plan. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky, but I'm going to hide my station point for a second. Because all of the lines that we want are up here in our, in our picture plane. And I just want to line that up on my... I have a, another sheet here. You can see I have another sheet below. And I'm going to set up my ground line. And my horizon line. Let me put that in a strategic spot there. I want to make sure it's in the camera. There it is. So here's my ground line. Ground line is kind of light. I just want to make this as long and wide as possible so I have plenty of room to project everything and then I'm going to measure from above that my horizon line which is going to be the six feet, I'll use six feet again we'll make the horizon line blue you're using the um, same quarter inch scale to measure that height so there's six feet right there There's my horizon line. So HL, GL. And then I need to um, tape this down. And I want to put this where both of the vanishing points are going to hit my horizon line. So I got to extend my horizon line over a bit on this side. And then I'll just move this over and now I want to make sure that that's parallel. Let's do it this way. Okay, make sure that that line's parallel. I'll just like kind of look through the page to make sure that's lining up. And I'm going to tape this down. There. And there. And now I can just project those critical points, okay? So I need a vertical measuring line here. There's a vertical measuring line. I want to make sure that's 90. So I'm using my protractor there to make that 90. So I'll just put that line in there for now. And then, um, whoop, it has to go all the way down to the ground line. There we go. So this is the zero, zero point. Everything I can measure for height goes along that line. Everything for width goes along the ground line in both directions. And then I want to locate my vanishing point left and right. So I'm going to use my straight edge line it up with my vanishing point left and make a mark down here. So now that's my vanishing point left on my horizon line. And my vanishing point right is going to be right near the end of my horizon line on this side. There's my vanishing point right. And now I have everything I need to start to project the information I have from the from the drawing. So this is where I would get height information. I'm just going to do the the bottom L shaped and I know it's um um the the containers are 8 feet tall or 9 feet tall rather, so it's going to be really easy for me to lay this out. So I want the quarter inch side and I want to make marks at the 1 foot increments along the vertical measuring line just like we did with the example.
I'm going to go up to 10 just in case I need it. So those are um, one foot increments. And then from this corner here, I want to go in this direction um, measuring one foot increments. And I think I've got, um, these are two 20, this is a 20 foot container and this is a 20 foot container and the container is 8 feet so this is 28 feet this way by 20 feet. So um, on this side I need 20 feet, on this side I need 28. So I'm just going to mark where 28 is from the uh, vertical measuring line so this is where 28 feet is for now. And if I have to make any other measurements over there just to save some time here. Okay, so we are ready to put in our construction lines for the building height. So from nine feet here, I'm going to go to my vanishing point on the right. This is nine feet. And draw in my construction line that's representing the height of the building vanishing point right to the base of the building and then from the base of the building to vanishing point left vanishing point left to the height of the building here this side of the building is 20 feet so I want to go over um, to the 20 foot mark Yeah, that is 20 feet. I wasn't sure if I remembered if I measured it. And then I want to use my, oh, we forgot to project our measuring points. Here's my measuring point left. And this is my measuring point right. So measuring point left through that 20 foot mark, like so, is where the edge of that building is going to be on that side. I'm going to show you another trick and I wanted to do that to see to, so you could see how close we get. Um, if we were to unfold this and use our station point um, as uh, our projection tool, So I got to make sure this all stays lined up. I'm going to unfold this and show the station point. Oops. Okay. So if we wanted to find out the width of the building in both directions, if we take our straight edge and go from the station point through the corner of the building, this is just another method instead of having to measure everything along the ground line. You go from the station point through uh, the corner of the building, make a mark right there. This is the building edge on that side. And do the same thing off of the corner of the building on this side. I'm going to the furthest corner out through the station point. Make a mark on the picture plane. So those two points there, because I projected those points through the observer, think of that as like, these are my eyeballs staring at those two corners. So I have to start them from here, stare at the edge of the corners of the building, and as they pass through the picture plane, that is what gets projected down. And so what I want to do is see how close we get. So we're going to use those two points by measuring lining up our measuring points left and right again where they were. There we go. Oh, actually I want to line that up, don't I? That's better. There we go. <laughs> um, 
and you can see that if I project straight down it lines right up with the edge of the building um, and if I were to do this